over here again, what we're doing is we're saying I'm taking this 400 times 1.03, 103%. 1.03, that gives us the, the uh, 412 times the 700 unit price. So, so we don't really need to calculate May, but if we wanted to, we can say, okay, May is 400 units times 700 per unit. Enter, that comes out to 280 sales. And then June is going to go up to 214, uh, 412 units times 700 per unit. And that gives us the 288.4. Now, what we're, what we're looking for, this is the sales. And what we're looking for is the, the selling expenses. So they, they're telling us that the selling expenses is 3% of sales. We have commission. Commission rate is going to be 3%. So once again, that's point or 2%. Sorry, it's 2%. 0 0.02. So I'm going to go back on there on that point. Oh, I'm going to go to the home tab. We're going to go to the uh, numbers group. And again, I could increase the decimals. 0.02 is the same as if I say the percent sign 2%. And that means that the commission will be the sales of 288.4 times 2% times 0.02 in the calculator. And that'll give us the commission of this 5768. We also pay a salary. So we have a salary, a sales salary to the sales manager of 3000. Therefore the total sales then would be, uh, the selling expense would be the commission five, seven, six, eight, plus the salary that we pay them. And that will give us the eight, seven, six, eight for the uh, selling expenses. So note that the problem, the main issue with this type of, of problem is to basically format the the information put it down in a format that works uh, obviously in excel it's nice because you can move things around if you don't have excel then you need to get uh, used to how to format different types of problems so you can do it efficiently by hand it would be the same type of thing graph like this but you want to be able to efficiently do that uh, by hand all right next one here once again i'm going to try to start off by reading that last line first to see if we can get some information on what needs to be done before we read through the entire thing so the last line begins right here with budgeted purchases of product a for the year would be so we need to find out what we're, what the budgeted purchases of a will be so keep that in mind as we read through the entire thing here starting from the top we have the sales budget for uh corp shows 20,200 units of product A and 20,200 units of product B are going to be sold for prices of $10.20 and $12.20 respectively. The desired ending inventory of product A is 30% higher than its beginning inventory uh, of 2,200 units. The beginning inventory product B is 2,700 units. The desired in inventory is 3,200. Okay, so we're going to try to focus in on product A. So we need to figure out what we need to purchase. Now, when we think about what we need to purchase, we have to start off that, that conversation out with how much do we think we're going to sell? How much do we think we're going to sell of product A throughout the year? So projected sales of product A, because that's what we're focusing on here, is 20,200 units. 20,200. So that's how much we need. 20,200 units. Now that if if that was it, if we were starting from nowhere, that's how much that's how much we would have to basically purchase or produce if we wanted to sell that much. But this is not our first year for one, which means that we have beginning inventory already. So we don't have to have the whole twenty thousand two hundred because we already have some in beginning inventory. And it's also true that we want a, basically a cushion at the end. So we want a desired ending inventory. And so, so we want something at the end. And what will that desired ending inventory be? Now they're gonna they're gonna give us the beginning number. We're, that's what we'll typically know. And then we're gonna basically calculate off that what the desired ending is. So they tell us that here: the desired ending inventory of product A is 30% higher than its beginning inventory. So I'm gonna do that in a separate calculation. We're gonna say the beginning inventory is uh, 2200, 2200. And we want it to be 30% higher because it's going to be a 30% higher for the ending inventory. So that would be 0.3, 30%. Or if we go to the home tab, I'm going to add some decimals. It's 0.3. That would be 30%. Or if we hit the percent sign, 30%. Same thing. That means that we want an increase of 2,200 times 
and that will give us the increase of 660. That's the amount of the increase. So how, what's the ending balance going to be then? We, we want it to be this 2200 plus the increase, the 30% increase of 660. Now, once again, we could do that quicker. We could do that quicker. We could say, okay, the beginning inventory is 2200, 2200 times not 30%, but 100 plus 30%, 1.3, 1.3. And if we go to the home tab numbers and we add decimals, it's 1.30, 1.3 is the same as if we make it a percent, the 130%. And we do that with one calculation. Then we're going to just say, okay, I want this 2200 times the original 100 plus the 30, 130%. And that will bring us to the uh, 2860. So if we were starting at a point of zero, we don't have any we don't have any inventory. We would need to produce the projected sales in units, 20,200. And we would have to produce enough to have our desired ending inventory, which in this case happens to be the beginning inventory. I'm just going to recalculate it here. 2,200 uh, 2, times 1.3, 130%. Enter. So there's, there's that. Okay. And then that's what we would have if we didn't have something in there already, but we already have a beginning balance. We already have a beginning balance and we're going to subtract that out. So if we didn't have any beginning balance, we would have to have the 20,200 plus this much for a cushion at the end, but there's already something in there in the beginning. So we're going to say minus the 2,200 that's in there at the beginning. So if we sum that up, then we're going to say what we need to produce then is going to be this 20,002 plus the, what we want at the end minus what's already in there. And that will be the 20,860. If we did that in a calculator, all we're doing there would be, of course, taking the 20,200 plus the 2860 minus the 2200, giving us the 20,860.